there were some people who missed her glance. She refused. Upeksha became indifferent to those people. Who were such people? Nisatvaha, who did not have any principles to live by. Nisatvaha. One of my teachers from Telugu Energy, he once said this very beautifully. He said, if a person does not have anything to stand for, he will fall for everything. Nisatva. Sattva means essence. If you do not have any essence in you, any principles which can define your life, which make a philosophy for your living, Nisatvaha. Such people are just living only for Udara Poshanam. Papi Petka Saval. They are just feeling that stomach which keeps on asking for more and more every day. It doesn't stop. Nisatvaha. Such people who are Nisatva. Lolupaha. Lolupa means who are given to only, you know, appeasement of senses. Only appeasement of senses is the motto of life for such people. Nirudhyogaha, those who do not have any initiative in life. Now uh, what? Today is Monday. I am waiting for Friday. <laughs> Monday blues. Nirudhyogaha, Gatatrapaha. Gatatrapa means shameless people. And when I'm saying shameless, please don't just think, you know, wearing swimming suits and not wearing a burqa is being shameless. Please. Get over these kind of definitions. Lajja. Kulajana Prabhavasya Lajja. Uh, in the fourth chapter of Durga Saptashati, when the mother is being praised by the Devakas and Rishis, they say that how are you? They say she is in form of Lajja in the human beings. Lajja means when. Uh, Lajja, Lajja does not mean oh, I am shy and that's why you want to stay under the Gungar all the time. That Gungat Wali Lajja we are not talking about. That Gungat concept I think must have come during the Muslim times only. <laughs> Our women were very very bold. Draupadi could talk in the court. If you read Mahabharata completely you will know that the revenue ministry of the Pandavas after Yudhishthira was coronated. That ministry, the revenue ministry, was managed and headed by Draupadi. Please don't think that Draupadi was cooking some, uh, you know, what else there inside. <laughs> Fine one. That was given to Bhima to do. <laughs> All finances of the state were managed by Draupadi. Please look at that. <coughs> Women were not meant only to sit inside the house and say that, oh well, if uh, the woman is of character, she will not be seen. All such concepts did not exist. They were not in vogue so much. There must have been. But not, it never ever. In fact, if you know the prasanga, that, that, that incident where Mandan Vishra and Bhagavan Shankaracharya had a debate, Shastrartha, Bhagavan Shankaracharya chose Mandan Vishra's wife as the judge. He did not say that, let us call some scholars from Kashi. It is in Prayagraj only. Mandan Mishra was living in Prayagraj, which is just few hours away from Banaras, Kashi. 
He did not say, let us call scholars from there and make them the judges. He said, your wife is a scholar. She knows and she would be the right one. He had that much confidence in Ubhaya Bharati that though she, she would be the judge, and she would be the judge not only of Shankaracharya but also of Mandal Mishra who is her husband. Her impartiality was not even doubted by Shankaracharya. We had women like that. So we are, when I am talking about Lajja, I am not talking about keep women under Buddha. Okay? We are not talking about that. Lajja over here means when a person does something unrighteous, the first time a person does something wrong, his conscience starts gnawing on him. And that time he is ashamed of himself. This Lajja is something that will protect you. But if you are going to say, no, no, nothing, everybody does the same thing, let me also do it. Now you are denumbing it. It is going to become numb. Next time you do, you are not going to feel the same intensity of Lajja then. This is the Lajja we are talking about, which is going to save the person from unrighteous living. Gatakrapaha, such nirlajya people. Yeah. Mahalakshmi said, I am not going to look at them. Upeksha, indifferent. She displayed indifference towards such people. As a result of that, what happened? Yada chopekshita lakshmya babhu daitya dhanavaha. Those people became daityas, dhanavas. Huh? People with nuisance value. <laughs> Daitya Dhanavas have nothing constructive to offer. All that they have is only, only, a, what do they say? Nuisance value. You know what is a nuisance value? That that fellow, you will have to recognize the presence of that fellow only because he has, he creates trouble. Otherwise, he has no value. Baba Madana. <laughs> and in, in Hindi and all that, we, we have a very common vakrata, we say Shami. <laughs> you know, there is this one story in which once Mahalakshmi and Shami had an argument that who looks beautiful? Have you heard? No. Okay, then get. Who looks very beautiful? Now, you know, it is very difficult to tell Shani. <laughs> so, they caught Narada. Narada Muni. That tell us, out of I mean, of both of us, who is more beautiful, Shani or Mahalakshmi? <laughs> what a competition, huh? Then Dr. Bola, Narada had a problem. <laughs> if he says Shani looks more beautiful, his entry in Vaikuntha is... <laughs> no, no visa. And if you say Mahalakshmi is more beautiful, this Shami, he will cross. He is in a, in a difficult situation. And Narada uses his intelligence and he says, now you both start walking from here and go back and I will tell you who looks beautiful. He did not tell them walk up to there so that he could run away, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, both of you look beautiful. When Mahalakshmi comes, she looks beautiful. And when you go, 
So also there is, there are these people, Daitya Dahanavas, who have only nuisance value. And you tell them that please stay away, that is where you are. Good, nice. Let us keep them in humor, keep them away. Don't bring them here. Babu, Daitya Dahanavaha. These are the people whom Mahalakshmi refuses to look at. Whether we will be able to imbibe the qualities of Narayana in us or not, but at least avoid these qualities. When there are, there is a predominance of these qualities in our life, it simply means we are people on whom Mahalakshmi will not cast her glance. And that's why once again I will read this line to you. Nisatva Lolupa Nirudyogaha Gatatrapaha Four things. Nishatvaha without any principles to live. Lolupaha given only to appeasement of senses. Vishaya Lolupaha. Lolupaha means only Vishaya Lolupaha. Day and night, what are they discussing? What should we cook next? Next. What should we eat next? Not cook, okay? No, not cook. Cook is cook. <laughs> they are discussing only who. No. This is nice, here that is nice. Even before they finish the lunch, they are already discussing what to have for dinner. This fellow has not even, you know, belched. Is already. Nirudyogaha. Nirudyogaha means without any initiative in life. No initiative in life. And that's why one of my teachers used to say, if you want to get some work done, give it to the busy person. If you say that this fellow is doing nothing, and that's why I will give my work to him, that work will not be done. He is sitting over there doing nothing because he can't do. Don't choose that. Give. Stay busy. These are the four people who became Dhanavas. Daitya Dhanava. And therefore, we have now two varieties of people. One on whom Mahalakshmi looks very compassionately and others who are, what do they say, whom, whom she disregards, becomes indifferent. And hence, Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita Bhagavan discusses there are two types of wells. Because such people also, those nuisance value people will also have. Ask me, in, I'm coming from India and we have, you know, one of our political leaders has come from Italy. Uh, ask me. <laughs> Sorry. If somebody is hurt, I, I don't mean to. So there he is. So such people also are endowed with certain power, wealth, etc. But we are not interested. We, Sri Krishna says that where there is two types of wealth. One is called as the Daivi Sampar, and the other one is called as Asuri Sampar. Daivi Sampar means prosperity, splendor, wealth, which is divine divine well and the other one is called as the asuri the demonic well those who are endowed with this asuri sampar now Bhagavan is going to I brought this shloka from Bhagavad Gita for you Dvamuta Sargao Lokesvin Daiva Sura Evacha Daiti Sampadvi Mokshaya 
निबंधाया सुरीमता आसुरिं युवनिमा पन्ना हा मूरा जन्मनि जन्मनि मामत्राप्य काउंटेय तपो यांत्यात्माम् रतिम् People now who are endowed vipula vipula means they have in plenty this asuri sampai the demonic wealth the demonic quality asuri yonima panna they are born again and again in those forms of existence which are asuri mudaha and then their intelligence will always be diluted, infatuated by that what is unreal, moodhaha, and how janmani janmani, not once, again and again in different life forms they will still retain their infatuation for ignorance. 